Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Maceo Cabrera Esteves, and welcome to the book launch of Latinitas. I am so excited to be um, presenting this. Uh, we have uh, the author and illustrator, um, Juliette Menendez, in conversation with uh, fellow children's uh, book author, Emma Otegui. This is uh, going to be a beautiful event uh, where Emma is going to be asking Juliette some questions about her book and you can get to know the book more. And we also have uh, a Q&A um, section at the bottom of the screen. So if you have any questions, please put them in there and towards the end, uh, we will be able to answer them for you. And uh, I also wanted to let you know that we will be giving away two books of Latinitas. So uh, whoever is participating in this event will get a chance to be part of the raffle. So stay till the end. Uh, this is again Booklandia and we are a bookstore uh, based out of Oakland, California. And we uh, just, um, specialize in uh, Spanish um, and bilingual books for kids and teens. And we also love to highlight, highlight Latinx authors um, with books in English. So it's such an honor to be able to uh, be part of this book launch. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please um, uh, um, go to the Q&A and um, I would like to present Juliette Menendez and Emma Otegui. Hola a todos. I am so excited that we are here at the launch online, unfortunately, but we are still so excited that Juliette's new book is out today. Latinitas is a book that I personally, I'm so excited to share with the little Latinitas in my family. And I'm excited to talk to Juliet about the process of creating this book. Uh, the webinar hosts are gonna be sharing some images from the inside, which I know you are all going to, um, it's just gonna blow your mind when you see the interior of this book. So Juliet, I first, you know, I think that, you know, as we wait for these images to pop up on the screen, there they are. I wanted to ask you about the illustration process, um, particularly because when I first saw the book, one of the things that struck me was that the illustrations, they, they look very unique. They look different from illustrations that we see in other children's books. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen any images in a children's book that quite have this energy or style. So I'm curious why this look and, and, and what inspired this look for the book? Thank you so much, Emma, and I'm so excited to be here too. And I know it's a virtual event, but I'm, I'm super excited to be sharing this moment with you. Um, yeah, so what, <laughs> that's very nice of you to say that there's a unique style. So um, yeah, I was really inspired, honestly, by um, Carlos Merida in Guatemala. Um, and he made these little prints that have always really inspired me. And um, I think that that was a big part of my initial inspiration, but I went on to look at, um, you know, I think the colors were such a big part of it for me. Um, they're inspired by street murals in Guatemala and restaurantitos and, you know, all of these painted signs and menus that I see around me. And I think I just wanted to kind of capture that quality. Um, so that was a big part of it. And, um, yeah, I think I was really, since the uh, project started out as a poster project, I was really inspired by poster art specifically, um, especially those kind of vintage travel posters. Um, I was kind of had them in mind and um, like check matchbook paintings and things like that. So that was a big part of it in Fortunato de Pero and Andean textiles. There was a lot going into it. So uh, yeah, that, that should pretty much cover it. That's so interesting. And, you know, I noticed you mentioned being, you know, inspired by murals and street art in Guatemala. 
I know that you identify as Guatemalan American and you know I'm somebody who also has a, a hyphenated identity I, I grew up here in the United States but in a in a Cuban family with you know lots of relatives scattered in, in different parts of Latin America and so I, I feel you know strongly Cuban American strongly kind of you know, more generally Latina, you know, American Latina. And, uh, and, and so I was curious, you know, when I saw how you identify, you know, kind of how do you, what's that like for you? What's kind of your relationship with Guatemala, your relationship with the United States? Do you want to speak to either of those? Wow, that's a huge question <laughs> that I never know how to answer, um, that I never know how to answer well. But, um, you know, I really, my mother is Irish American um, and I definitely have that side of me. And I think that sometimes it's been hard to really express how much I feel like both. Um, I definitely feel very much her family, um, it, you know, brought me up just as much as my Guatemalan family. And those two cultures are equally a part of me. And I don't know how else to put it. I think a lot of times there's kind of this, they say there's a third culture children and I guess maybe I'm something like that. I never know. Um, and it depends on which day. There are days that I feel more one way than the other. It depends what's going on. Um, today, I guess I feel a lot more Latina. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's that, but I definitely feel very strongly attached to both sides of my identity. Yeah, no, and I think that's what's beautiful about Latinitas as a project is that it's, you know, you have so many different um, Latin American nations featured, but you also have Latinas in the United States who, who I think many of us think of as, as, as Latinas. We don't necessarily think of them through their, through their national identities. And I, I think you've done a really lovely job of, of having that balance of we really see the whole diversity of the Latina identity um, presented throughout the book because there are so many different uh, so many different countries and figures represented. Uh, just a follow up question on the art that comes came to mind to me as you were talking. Um, you know, you mentioned the being inspired by posters and and yeah, I, I love this because you know to me this this I'm thinking of um, you know people who used to take apart like uh, Arthur Rackham fairy tale books and if you ever go to you know spend some time in like old bookshops you'll see people take apart like old fairy tale books and pull out, you know, individual images to use as prints in children's rooms. And to me, this just like screams to, not that anybody should ever take apart your, your beautiful book, but you know, it's something where I can, <laughs> see, I can see somebody like taking a page out of the book and, and putting it on the wall as a print in, the, in their child's room, whether, you know, I, I can see myself doing, you know, pulling out Celia Cruz or Alicia Alonso or another, another figure that has really meant a lot to me or to my family. So I'm just wondering, how did you, um, you know, you mentioned that poster inspiration, but were these created digitally? Were they created um, in a more traditional medium? How, like, how did you physically make these? Oh, yes, that's a great question. Um, so I have, I do everything by hand, um, except for the last part of the editing process. So I paint with these watercolors that I love. Um, <laughs> they're this brand old Holland that I just as soon as I started working with them I just started I don't normally say a brand but <laughs> just the colors meant so much to me and so I I love that part of being able to um, create create something that it, that's already an object as I'm creating it there's something so special about that to me um, so yeah I paint everything by hand and, um, and then I scan it in and edit it a bit on Photoshop. So for example, the text, I started out painting all of the text, but um, to actually have this book in people's hands today, <laughs> I needed to speed up the process. So I ended up doing that digitally, but yeah, pretty much everything is done by hand. Wow, it's amazing to me because first of all, there's such an opaque, like, you know, the, the images are so opaque for watercolor. I'm used to seeing watercolor that feels kind of really light and transparent and these have a really bold quality to them I thought you know, I don't know that <laughs> it means so much to me that you say that at the same time I realized I never actually learned for color technique and me I had printmaking in my mind in college um, I had a wonderful printmaking professor 
Um, I used to do lithography with those huge stones. I have no idea why that was the one <laughs> that stood out to me. But having those bold colors and blocks of colors, that's always been something that's really inspired me. So um, that's the way that I end up painting with watercolors. But it's true. It's not, it's not the typical technique. No, that's so interesting. I love the idea, th that background, the idea that you like studied lithography and, and it's almost, they almost are like these print blocks, but that they're made in watercolor. So that's just so, it's, it's totally fascinating. As is your desk. That is a gorgeous desk. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. A friend actually made it for me. His <laughs> Pedro Silva, he's he's an amazing carpenter here in Guatemala, and he he made it fun. That's amazing. And Juliet, are you uh, zooming in from Guatemala right now, or are you? Yes, I'm here in Guatemala City. Um, it may not look like that because I'm wearing this sweater. It's been strangely cold, <laughs> but yes, I'm here in Guatemala City. Amazing, beautiful. Um, that's that's just I've I've loved seeing these illustrations and learning more about your process. It's fascinating. And then, you know, thinking about how, you know, you said it started as a poster project and then it evolved into a book. And I'm curious, what made you decide to make this a collection or an anthology as opposed to, um, you know, I've written a picture book about one Latin American hero. What, what made you decide to have this be this, this expansive collection that spans I don't know how many nations and 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 different <laughs> like different you know racial and ethnic communities in Latin America. There's there's just so much represented in this book. Yeah, thank you for asking that. It's such a good question. Um, well, I mean, I am I initially thought about this project like you know maybe I would do individual books, and I I definitely think that each of these women deserve their own books, if not many. But I think that there is a real value in having them together in a collection especially for children, for a children's book. And, you know, I want children to be able to see themselves in this book and see that there's a whole history there that they're part of. And that um, when they read each story that one leads to another in a, in a certain way, it's not exactly that way, but it is presented chronologically, um, that they really feel like this is their story too. And so they can feel like they're part of it and that, you know, this is now their moment and that they're adding on and contributing in, in the ways that a lot of these women have. Yeah, I can see these being something, like I can see a classroom having, you know, every kid choose one of the Latinitas to, you know, focus on or, or you know, learn more about, or it's such a great springboard. Uh, you know, I think to, to have them collected and to invite people to learn more. I know when I, when I first looked at the book, I mean, and, and I'm somebody who in my in my past life, I was an, you know, academic, I went to graduate school, I, you know, studied, uh, you know, colonial Latin America. So I, I've read a fair amount of Latin American history in my day, but there were people in this book who I wasn't familiar with. And then when I went and learned about them, I was like, oh my goodness, how have I not <laughs> known about their stories before? So I do think this is such a beautiful marriage of, of well-known figures that are that are household names to all of us, but then also, you know, people who, who should be household names and, and just aren't yet um, for, for reasons that we could, we could probably go into. But I think this is going to be a really nice opportunity for families to introduce, uh, you know, introduce kids to their favorite heroes, whether we see Selena there on the screen or, <laughs> you know, learn more about, about people who might not be familiar to them, but maybe will become the heroes for the next generation. So I think that's, that's, yeah, that's really terrific. Oh, more of this art. I love looking at these. I could look at them all day. Thank um, you. Thank you. And so then much. actually looking at all of these, you know, I'm looking at like, uh, you know, the, the images of them again, they're, they're children. Right. Which is sort of interesting. It's not a way you see these figures depicted really ever. We always see them as adults. So, so why did you, why did you imagine them as children? And then the title is also Latinitas. It's not Latinas. Right, right. Um, yeah, that was something that was very important to me, actually, from the beginning. And I know it's kind of, a, kind of a detour from the way these are often presented. And I think that for me, because it was a children's book, and I really wanted children to be able to relate to these stories, to see themselves in these, in these stories and think, you know, I could do this. I could, maybe I like painting, maybe I could be an artist one day, or I like to um, make sure that everything is fair. 
that's how some of these activists started and you know really seeing how they started and being able to relate to them was so important to me so I decided to show them as children taking these very first steps into who they would later become without even knowing you know necessarily that they would become something you know along the lines of a, a, a career but just what their interests were and their passions were so that children can be able to see that they share those qualities and you know maybe be inspired to do some of these things one day. Yeah, I know one of the things I've really enjoyed about writing nonfiction biographies for kids in, in the picture book format is, for me, the question always becomes, what about this person's young life made them decide to do, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the things that they did? Um, and it's always so interesting to me. I know I've, um, writing about Jose Martí, it was, it was really interesting to me seeing the way his experiences, you know, being taken out of Havana and, and taken to the countryside where he was really, you know, exposed through his own eyes to plantation slavery in a way that, you know, kids of his social class in Havana didn't normally see and how that, that kind of changed his life and changed his attitude. That was always really interesting to me because it's just like these things that happen to people when they're, when they're yes. 10 or 11 years old that can change the entire trajectory of their lives. So I, I do love that idea of just focusing on, on that moment as children that they had that first, that first spark um, is really fascinating to me. And then of course they are all women are uh, there right. or, 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 or girls, I suppose. So um, can you talk more about that, about the, the, the feminist nature or kind of thrust of this book? Yeah, sure, of course. Um, so how that happened, you know, I was teaching in a school in 2014 as an art teacher. And initially, you know, I thought I just wanted to see posters on the walls that reflected the students that I was teaching we were mainly, I was teaching in Upper Manhattan, and my students were mainly Dominican, Puerto Rican, Mexican at the time. So I was really seeing posters on the walls of Benjamin Franklin or Dali or Einstein and thinking, I just want to see people that my, my students can relate to up on these walls. And so I initially started researching uh, Latinx history and thinking of including both men and women. Um, but I really was shocked to find how few women I was finding and also that when I was finding them they were relegated to footnotes and so you know that I've always had a certain feminist in me but I think that particularly brought it out and if there was anything that was going to do it it was that so I decided to get dedicate this project to celebrating Latinas in particular. Yeah oh I love that it's it's wonderful. And I, and I think that connection to your students, it's interesting. I'm also somebody who like you, you know, I, I taught elementary school at the, at the very beginning of my school of my career. Um, and even though it's been a long time since I was in the classroom, you know, as my primary job, of course, I'm in schools a lot now as a children's mm -hmm. author and doing author visits. I do think uh, the time that I spent in the classroom you know, it's interesting that you were saying for you as an art teacher, you were just looking for like, what is visually available to the students and is it representative for them? And for me, as I was teaching elementary school Spanish and it was really about, you know, what's available to us to, to read <laughs> right. in an elementary school Spanish class and, and, and the books that for me, I really felt like were not there for me to teach with. Um, and that really motivated me. So I think it's, it's interesting how how much that experience of, of being in a classroom and, and seeing a need really um, really stays with us for, for a long time afterward. It, it does. We remarkably have very similar backgrounds. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the exact idea. Even just deciding to become um, an author and illustrator. I initially thought more illustrator. There was some major encouragement there <laughs> for this book. Um, but yeah, you know, it was really just seeing that need in, in these classrooms that where I was. Um, and I'm so glad you share that. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. And so, I mean, it's funny. So the illustration part, it's funny because really we have similar backgrounds and I'm like, except I can't draw. Although I do often show, I mean, I just know that kids are going to connect so much with this because oftentimes when I do school visits, I'll show kids my notebook um, because I doodle in the margins, um, and oh, so cool. <laughs> they're always so they're always so fascinated because, of course, they think like you're an author, like you're 
your work must look so so perfect and so you know like there's just words 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 and I'm like there's words 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 but there's also doodle 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 um but but nothing you know nothing ever that uh that looks like anything um so that's really interesting to me. So then the the process of you said that there was some encouragement taking this from being, you know, an illustration project to being a writing project. So what was that like? What was the process of researching these Latinitas like? Uh, you know, kind of how did you how did you make that evolution from from art teacher to then illustrator to then author illustrator? Right. So a lot of it, I will have to admit, did come from Adriana Dominguez, my agent, who you know. Um, she's just so encouraging. You know, I have always actually loved to write. It's not like it was something that was completely far-fetched, but I honestly, I wasn't sure if I could do something like this. And she really encouraged me from the very beginning. And then just, you know, putting together the research and starting to put this together was when I really decided maybe, maybe I can do it. <laughs> so, but that definitely helped a lot to have that encouragement. And as far as the research goes, that, that was an enormous um, process in and of itself. Um, I think that it, it started with this idea of wanting to represent different professions um, and having a range of different backgrounds and cultures um represented in the book and from there I really just you know I would literally run home every morning um while researching in the coffee shop downstairs and just be like oh my god I found the most amazing Latina and then the next story would be I found another most amazing <laughs> Latina um and a lot of that came from reading different um, articles, newspaper articles from back in the day for looking up different interviews that they've had and really trying to find information about these women's lives. Oftentimes I could find, you know, what their accomplishment was, but really trying to delve into who they were, what inspired them. That um, definitely led to much more in-depth research. And, you know, there were people who caught my attention, like Gumer Sinda Payas, for example, when I read that she was not only a playwright um, that wrote these radio novelas that were um, aired all over Panama, but then she later used that material to become a congresswoman. Um, and that was her platform as a congresswoman for you know, getting us things like um, daycare for, <laughs> and maternity leave and things like this that were just so amazing for her country. So I really wanted to find out about her and that story was already amazing, but I didn't know really what her, her childhood was like or what had inspired her initially. And so I was looking all over online, like I must find something about this woman. She's just too amazing to not include. Um, and I came across this, uh, this current Congresswoman, Balbina Herrera, presenting her book and I was like I'm just gonna go for it I'll reach out to her and miraculously she reached back and gave me some information about her as well as this other um this other woman Dania Batista who had written her dissertation on Gumer and you know it just it meant so much that they were willing to support this project but yeah it was it was things like that just really delving into the research and finding little bits and pieces and um the people that made it happen were just so generous by sharing yeah, that information. That's an incredible story because I think, you know, to me, when I see this book, just the scope is so ambitious because um, you do have, you just have so much represented here, so many, so many different communities, so many different countries, so many different professions. Um, you know, and I remember when I was working on my book about Jose Martí, I remember just even for somebody who was, you know, fairly well known, and there's a lot of material about, I still remember there was just, you know, like the things you described, like emailing the person who, who wrote the book and hoping that they reach out to you. I mean, I remember at one point calling the, um, there's like a little historical society. This is like the strange things that happen among train fans, but there's like a little historical okay. society devoted to the train line that used to go from um, New York City to the Catskill Mountains that of course is, you know, now closed. Um, but there was some historical society in that region. And I, at some point, because I needed to check something for the book, um, 
I have to call them and ask them for like the timetables of the trains in the 19th century. And it was like, wow, wow. <laughs> some old, you know, some person at this historical society. And I think people, when they see a book for children, they kind of think that you like Googled it, you know, or that it's, uh, that it's, you know, sort of common knowledge, but actually I think because it's illustrated, because you're trying to, un, you know, mine the stories of the childhood of these figures, the research process is often much more intense than, than it would right. be you now for, for a different book. So I, I really applaud the fact that you were able to bring in so many different cultures and so many different figures. We have some questions coming in from the audience, if you're ready for some audience questions. Yes, I would love okay. to hear their questions. All right, so um, somebody has just asked us, can you tell us your, this is, this is actually a really great question that I wish I had thought of to ask you because I wanna know. Of the whole book, who are your three free, your three favorite Latinitas and why? Or can you choose three Latinitas to highlight today? Oh my goodness. Um, wow. I never know what to say because I, I truly, truly love them all. They're just amazing women. Um, but I mean, I will say that Gumer Sinda Paez, I think just she really inspires me, particularly what I was telling you, but also because I realized the things that she was able to do back in 1941, she helped write the constitution and it just means so much to me to be able to look at that and think, you know, the things we want today, what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's also in the book, <laughs> what she's saying, we can make this happen. I, I honestly feel like we can. Um, so yes, she definitely inspires me. And Rigoberta Menchu Tum, la doctora she, Rigoberta Menchu Tum, sorry. Um, she is just incredible and she's from Guatemala. So it meant everything in the world to me that um, I actually reached out to her to um, see what she thought of the profile and her illustration and get her feedback. And it just meant everything in the world to me that she was generous enough to respond um and she's just such an incredible inspiration to me so um yes she's definitely one and i guess um wow well i guess these personal stories are what make it a little bit different but i guess susana torre the architect featured in the book she is just incredible because before i even decided to write this book speaking of encouragement <laughs> she wrote, reached out to me and just said this that she loved the idea of portraying back when this project was just posters she loved the idea of portraying um, these latinas as children and finding that kind of spark as you mentioned um, into what they would later become and so she was really supportive and I actually was able to interview her and she's been a big part of the process of this book as well. So I guess I would say those three, but honestly, like I said, I really do love them all and I could never really pick a favorite favorite. Those just happen to have some personal stories. That's lovely. Yeah, I think I, I just, I can't wait for everybody to see these and see these and, and, and learn about them. Um, I wanted to mention, I'm going through the questions that are coming into us through the Q&A. If you are tuning in and you would like to ask a question, please just type it into the Q&A and I will make sure that we'll make sure that it gets to Juliet and that we get to ask her these great questions that are coming in. So now I just see a question coming in from the mom of a young Latino boy. And, you know, it's so interesting how representation, you know, the different ways it plays out in different communities. She's saying that she's finding it really hard to find biographies for boys that aren't about sports figures um mm -hmm. you know so she's saying so like would you ever consider writing a latinitos and, uh, <laughs> and and do you have any response to the types of figures who tend to get elevated or stereotypes stereotyped within the latina community oh that's a really good question um you know I don't know about any specific plans for Latinitos, I guess I would consider it. Um, but I do think that, you know, there, there are many wonderful books out there about, you know, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and like your book, Jose Marti. There, there are a lot of books out there. I know that feeling though, having been in the classroom um, and just feeling like I want more, you know, it's not that there aren't, but I would want more. And, um, I, I do understand that. And I think that 
you know, as so many very articulate and wonderful people have said before me, how much it matters to just have different types of representation of so many different things, which is what I try to do with Latinitas for sure, and just showing different backgrounds and professions. And I think that's equally important to show for, for boys. At the same time, I also think that these stories, they are universal stories. I did focus on women in this book, but you know, their childhood, the games that they play, the, the things that they do, those are things that little boys do as well. And I definitely feel that they could be inspired, equally inspired. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's so funny because we, you know, I think about, so so I have a book that uh, my, one of my novels is uh, this book. It's most of the characters in the book are girls. It's it's a book about a girl and her cousin, who's also a girl and, and her friend. And, and it's, it's, it's a book that often gets cast as a girl book. And, and sometimes I've struggled with that when I'm when I'm talking to a group that is, you know, all or, you know, predominantly or, you know, you know, mixed uh, gender, but then I always come back to like how many books about boys um, we ask girls to read growing up. I think about like, right. Lord of the Flies was taught in like two separate English classes in my, <laughs> in my, in my, in my middle school and high school. And there are, there are, you know, literally no female characters in that book. And um and so I think that, I think it's so tricky because of course we, we want that male representation. We want boys to see that particularly boys of color, there's such a stereotype surrounding, you know, brawn and, and, and it, it, it can get really, I think, icky, you know, especially I just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, my most recent picture book is about a Latino boy who's very shy. And I feel like it, some of those stereotypes get so sticky and icky. Um, and I think with girls, it tends to be like, the pop star stereotype is the one that right. people, people go to. But um, but then I think actually if it's being read by 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 kids of both genders, that really um, or of all genders, that opens up that opens up so many more, so many more doors. Okay, there's some more questions coming in. So let's go right along. So um, okay, always encouraging girl power. Love that, uh, Angel. Um, and oh. I like, this is a great question. Okay, Julia, you're on the spot. You researched okay. the childhoods of all of these amazing girls. What are your parenting tips for people who are looking to raise oh my goodness. strong, amazing <laughs> women in their families? Oh my goodness, that is an amazing question. I have to admit, I don't have children, so <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I'm qualified to give parenting tips, but um, I will say that you know, I think every story that I read about, they, did, they didn't necessarily have the same types of families by far. There were many different backgrounds, but I do think that um, it's so important to just be able to encourage children to explore what they want to do. Um, and, you know, to really, to, to figure out what it is that makes them particularly shine. And I know in my own classroom, which is the only like real, <laughs> Oh, connection I can have in some ways to this question, though I do um, um, understand. Yeah, I think that it's it's such an important thing to just be able to encourage children when you see that they like something that it doesn't have to be perfect right away, that it's fine to experiment with it, that it's fine to let it evolve in its own natural way. And I think that you know, there's a, there's a tendency to want to kind of intervene and be like, oh, this is the way you can do it. And I think there's for so many of these Latinas, what really inspired me about the way they handled it is that they kind of just figured it out on their own. And I'm not going to say that they didn't have amazing mentors, role models in their own lives. There are lots of different stories in here, but I do think that they had that ability to just kind of play. And I think that um, that's so important in childhood to just, it doesn't have to come out perfect. It doesn't have to be right, right away, or what if those things even exist, but just yeah. I hope yeah. I'm answering that question. So. No, I love that. I'm, I'm la I was laughing at your response too, because I found that one of the things that happened when I was teaching and, you know, again, this was, I was right out, right out of college and I, you know, was, was, you know, I'd been babysitting and I, I taught in Richmond as an undergraduate, but it was my first time really teaching and I didn't have children of, of my own. And I would, parents would get to parent teacher conferences. And instead of asking me like about their children's grades or the last quiz or something that I felt like, you know, would, 
wouldn't sort of make sense. They would start asking me like, our child is, you know, we're having trouble turning off the TV and they're getting very anxious about this. And I would be like, I don't know what to say, but I, I <laughs> think that, you know, I used to laugh at the time because I was like, why are they asking me this? But now as, you know, as a parent myself, one of the things I notice is that, you know, you just have one kid and when you're in the classroom and especially now, you know, I work with, you know, I, I mean, I mean, I, I must have met, you know, hundreds, probably more like thousands of kids through the work I do. And so I do think that experience of getting to see a lot of kids is sometimes really helpful for parents when they're just like, is what my kid is doing? Like, have you seen it before? Are there tips? So I think you, you probably know more than you give yourself credit for. Oh, somebody's asking, are these prints going to be available for purchase so that you don't have to take apart the book, which was my idea. Uh, <laughs> buy two copies, keep one on your shelf, take apart the other one. But that is a that is a wonderful um, question and I hope so. I guess we'll, we'll have to talk with Macmillan about that or I guess maybe I could send them out there. But um, yes, I would love these to actually um, stand on their own as posters as well. And especially, you know, I had started out thinking of classrooms. So I would love to see teachers putting these up around schools and things like that. So one way or another, I guess the answer should be yes, it, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see these replace some of the like, there is no I in team uh, uh, posters that not that those aren't great. I mean, I, I actually don't know that those are great posters. I think these would be better posters for many many classrooms. Um, a question from Patricia is, um, ooh, how are you celebrating the launch of your debut book? This is, you know, I think oh. that we start here of, you know, this is such a major, I mean, such a life milestone for any creative professional. And you're, you know, this is all happening in, in quarantine. So, so what are you doing to make it special despite Wow, this is a beautiful question, let me just say. Um, well, you know, I was, to be honest, um, a little bit bummed out that I was going to be celebrating in quarantine. But um, Macmillan just so happened to send me my author copies on Friday. They arrived in Guatemala. Very unexpected. I had no idea they were coming that day. But as soon as those arrived, um, I started writing the dedications in them. And I wrote to all of the I started especially with the women who have inspired me and encouraged me to make this book and just inspired me in general. And writing those dedications was a big part of the celebration. And then I sent out a little messenger bike here in um, Guatemala yesterday with all of these little wrapped copies and hearing from different people, my cousins, family, um, you know, friends, um, just the way they were reacting to the book and how much it meant to them to see all of these Latinas together, that was incredible and meant so, so much and means so, so much to me. Um, yeah, and then, you know, my grandmother, she is a poet. And um, last night I was thinking about her and how she's the Latina who has most inspired me, Luz uh, Castejón de Menéndez, my grandmother. And so I was reading her poetry and just thinking about all of the other women who have um, just meant so much to me in my life. So that that's the kind of quiet version of the celebration, but it's been very meaningful. That's lovely. That's such a lovely story. And that connection to your grandmother, I think is so, just the, the relationship to writing and to art is so powerful. Um, and speaking of which, I mean, you mentioned that your grandmother was one of the people who, um, or the Latina who inspired you the most. Were there any books when you were a kid that you really cherished or that really spoke to you? That's a question coming from Celia. Oh, that's such a good question. Well, um, you know, it's funny because I was asked recently if there was a book that I really liked as a child. And um, to be honest, I grew up back and forth between Guatemala and the United States, but I did most of my education in the United States. And it's so funny. I, I did enjoy reading, um, but I, I didn't feel so connected to it actually until I read Isabel Allende's House of the Spirits. And it was the first time that I was like, oh my goodness, this, this feels like me. I don't know. They, 
And speaking of my grandmother, there was even, you know, a clairvoyant, um, eccentric grandmother just like mine. And, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is just, this is perfect. And so that really inspired me a lot. Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> it, I was a bit of a late bloomer as a reader, I guess. That's wonderful. I love those examples. And then another question is, Oh, I really like this question because we've been talking a lot about gender from different angles and gender representation in books for children. Are there um, any Latinitas who are uh, part of the LGBTQ community? That's a question from Elisa. Oh, for sure. Um, well, I would say, you know, Chabela, Chabela Vargas. Um, oh my goodness. The, I know that there are more. I mean, Frida Kaolo was definitely like, um, she 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 would be included in that community um i don't know why it's not coming to me right now but yes there are i didn't mention it specifically um in the profiles but yes yeah i think that's really nice for um for kids to see that you know under this umbrella of latinitas and, and i actually think that's one of the things that juliet when i read the book i i really admired the most about what you did is that on the surface, we see, you know, lots of Latina heroes, some of whom you've never heard of before. Right away, that's groundbreaking, that's important, that fills a need that we all have on our bookshelves. But when you open the book and you actually start looking at the figures inside, you see that you're actually doing so much more where representation is concerned because we're seeing you know, different language communities, right? We're speaking, you know, speakers of indigenous languages who often are you know, they're not represented in children's books and their language practices are certainly not represented. We see, um, you know, a range of, you know, different races. We see, you know, countries that frankly, we we don't uh, represent enough in, in children's books or or if ever, right? I mean, there's certain Latin American countries that we just, we just don't read enough about um, or that get right. ignored time and time again. So I do think that, um, you know, and then you also have queer representation within the book. So I think that one of the things I hope for everybody who's watching, if you, you know, the book just came out today. So I don't know if you've had, I hope you have ordered your copies. If you, if you have not, um, I hope you go out and do so today, because I think when you open this book and you, you see the range um, of experiences and identities that are represented, you're going to see that it's so much more than just a book about Latinitas. It's, it's Latinitas and all of the identities of which there are so many that are encompassed under the Latinitas, you know, um, you know, heading or umbrella. Um, oh, another question is you, how did you, this is a huge project as we've just described. <laughs> how did you, I mean, how did you keep it together and, and kind of what were your struggles and, and how did you manage it? I mean, what was your organization like? How, how many drafts of these did you go through? Um, oh how goodness. long did it take to make each of these images? And you know, did you do a lot of planning and sketching before? For sure, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> yes, I would honestly. There's there's not like a wonderful answer of how I was organized because I'm I don't know. I I would not call myself the most organized person but I definitely am a very hard worker so it really meant like for about a year and a half working like 14 to 16 hours a day researching and you know thinking and writing and I did do many many drafts um, as my editor Laura Godwin knows um, she she bared she was bearing with me as I figured figured out how to write essentially. Um, yes, I did do many drafts and I also, do, I always do many, many sketches um, whenever I'm illustrating. There's kind of, I don't know if it's even a misconception. I, I suspect that many artists and illustrators do this. I definitely know of some, but you know, there's this idea that you just put pen to paper and out comes this perfect illustration or however you want it to be. But the truth is that it really ends up being kind of this process of little by little, it's coming together and one sketch leads to another and you figure out what you wanna do, what you wanna change or take away or add. And I think that, yeah, it was it was a very long, process of doing that and the whole thing took about a year and a half. Wow. Wow. And do you have any advice for people who are 
facing a similarly large project that maybe feels really daunting and overwhelming when you when you first set out? Yeah, um, I've actually talked about this with my editor a little bit. Um, you know, I think if I had known that it was going to be this incredibly intense, I would have been like, wow, I don't I don't know about this. Um, but actually, I started out the project just being like, I love this project and I want to make this happen and I'll figure it out along the way. And I think so much of it, any project is having that attitude. I'll figure it out, whatever comes along some, some way or another, I'll either reach out to the people I need to reach out to to ask for help or you know, just figure it out. And I think kind of not knowing helps you get through such a big project, just keeping at it day by day. And I think something that my partner, Luis de Leon Diaz taught me a lot, who has been an incredible, incredible support in this project. Um, I cannot um, <laughs> state that enough actually to truly thank him. But, you know, he, he would say just, you know, look at the day in terms of, not what you accomplish per se, like I finished this sketch, I finished this profile, but that I spent the day working on this. So it, it is a full day of work. I spent the day, maybe it was researching that day and I didn't have a profile at the end of the day, but you know, I, I would definitely say that that's such an important mindset that it's in the doing. So just the fact that you're working on it, you're doing it, that's enough some days um, for sure. Yeah. And I love that you sort of highlighted, I think, the magic of, of, of books by debut authors and illustrators. I, I definitely felt with my first book that in retrospect, you know, my first book was about Jose Martí, who's someone who is um, an amazing figure, but a, a complex one, somebody who should be better known, but isn't. And um, of course, talking about all these, you know, themes of revolution for a very young audience. And I... It, when I look back on it, I'm like, that was a like a risky, hard thing to do. And I think what made it what made it successful and what made it sort of, you know, a really special project was the fact that I really didn't know because I was so new to the field while I was doing it, all of the reasons I shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, and I, <laughs> Uh, and that's something that's really exciting to all of us as readers when we discover new new authors and new illustrators that we often with somebody new there's there's just a level of risk taking and um and yeah just some kind of really unique quality that that you know gets harder I think to maintain later on and we have one more oh one more question so one more question just came in from Maria Maria de Leon, um, the illustrations should permanently find shelter in a museum. They are so gorgeous. Um, I would love to know what researching all of these amazing Latinitas sparked in you as a strong oh. Latina. What did they leave you a message? Did they leave you? Is there something, what changed about you on the inside from the process of, of making this book? Did they tell you something? That's such a good question. Um, no one has asked me that before and I love that question. I think that for me, um, what changed was just seeing how Latinas have been there the whole time. I mean, there, I think I had this strange perception, especially when I was little and I would read history books and it's just man after man after man after man doing something. And I kind of knew the women were there, but I didn't know what they were doing, how they were involved and seeing that they were involved in everything from politics to science to whatever it was that they were doing and they were involved, they were there, they were not on the sidelines. I think that has really inspired me to the way that I want to approach life. You know, I don't, I don't want to be on the sidelines and it makes me feel like, of course, we were there the whole time as Latinas. And I think if I were to say anything, that's the biggest thing, but there's so much I, I could think about for that question. And I'll keep thinking about it because I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I remember once at a school visit, a kid stood up and asked me if you met Jose Martí today, what would you say to him? And I, I think that's maybe the flip side of this question is, is both, you know, if you, if, if these, if you can meet these women today, you know, what would they say to you and, and what would you say to them? I just, um, 
It's the sort of question that gives me chills. We, we actually, I said that was the last question, Julia, but you have, you're inspiring so many people that there are two more questions coming in. So I wanna make sure that we, we answer them because they're actually, as I'm reading them now, they're really terrific questions. So one of the questions is um, about the objects in the illustration. I don't know if we can zoom in in our slideshow to, to uh, some of these objects, but each Latinita is holding something. And sometimes they're a little bit, you know, surprising. And I'm just wondering how you chose, I, I'm wondering, the person who asked this question, Lucia, is wondering how you chose these objects. But now that it's asked, I've been wondering it all along. So I want to know more. Oh, that's a great question. Well, you know, the objects were really something like I wanted to show that they were playing with something. So I wanted it to relate to whatever activity they were doing as a child. Um, so, for example, I really meet Ayes, who is up, um, you know, she's she's with these big goggles and it was because she loved exploring in her in her garden and pretending that she was ex an explorer landing in outer space. And, you know, now she's a virtual reality engineer. And of course, you know, she's working with the technology that you can see things in a different way um, that you haven't that you don't need to actually go there to be able to see it. So I think that you know, I really tried to find an object that was somehow representative of something that they did later, but tying it to their childhood. Um, and for Berta Cáceres here with her, with her radio, that's supposed to be her radio um, that she would listen to with her family, like, you know, secretly, because they weren't allowed to listen to those um, radio shows from Nicaragua and Cuba and things like that. So, you know, there's always some type of object that relates to their childhood. Wow. And what about, we, talk, we touched on this earlier in the style, but somebody asked again about the color palette. So maybe we should just circle back to that. Um, is the color palette, you know, you mentioned that you, you've sort of always been drawn to bold colors and bold, bold contrasts. Are these specific, is this specific color palette inspired by a particular a particular style, a particular artist, um, or are they just the colors that you liked and that spoke to you? Well, it's um, the colors are really to do with the way that the walls are painted. I was living in Antigua for a little bit before Guatemala City, but here in Guatemala City too, there's a lot of painted buildings in these in these vibrant colors that I chose to use as the backgrounds because for me, that's the backdrop um, <laughs> that seemed most natural to, to come out with. But also, you know, these colors, I think, depending on the Latinita, I felt like there's something, and I wouldn't be able to articulate this exactly, like there was a system that every single Latinita that has a blue background was this way, or it wasn't like that, but there were certain colors that just felt like they worked with whatever Latinita I was illustrating. Um, and I can only say that it was the energy that somehow they gave off. And I tried to capture that in their background color. Maybe that's the message they really left you was what, what, what color, you know, represented them or captured them. I, I love that. Um, and finally, are you working on a Latinitas number two? <laughs> I have no specific plans um, that like there's nothing in the work with the works with Macmillan, but you never know. We'll, we'll see about that one. Well, I know that there are so many amazing Latinitas to discover in this book and, and it is only the beginning. It is really a springboard and an invitation to young readers. Juliet, these questions and just hearing more about your work has been a true pleasure and I, um, I can't wait to, I, I saw an advanced copy, I can't wait to see the final copy and I, I just know that this book is going to make a difference in the lives of many young readers and many educators. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been such a pleasure for me. These have been wonderful questions and a wonderful conversation. And I just thank you so, so much. Thank you to all of the people who attended and who asked such wonderful questions. This has really been, really been terrific. And I think did, um, yes, Maceo, the link to order the book at Booklandia is in the chat box. So if you do not have your copy yet, you should go and get it as soon as possible because this is just one, I, to me, this is like one of those things that should be, should be on every kid's bookshelf. It should be, you know, 
remember when we were kids, we used to have like those encyclopedia, kids encyclopedias. To me, this is like the, the next iteration, the thing that every kid needs on their bookshelf. Thank you so much for saying that. Well, I hope I hope it's on people's bookshelves soon. Let me know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, so much. This has been amazing. Thank you to everyone who asked questions. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. Hi there. That was amazing. <laughs> it was so fun to watch and to hear like, all about the book um, and the illustrations, you know, as you could tell, we're all fascinated by them. And um, I've had the pleasure of looking at the book um, and my daughter as well. And she loves um, drawing and illustrating. So uh, when she learns about the process of illustrators, it's really amazing to her. And um, she really uh, liked that the stories were about like the, the person's childhood. I, I actually, read to her about, um, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, she's Cuban American and she's an astronaut. Ah, Serena and, Onion. Yes. <laughs> Susana, right? Susana. Se I don't Serena. Know. Serena. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was such a truly amazing story. I didn't know that an astronaut could, you know, a doctor could also be an astronaut and that there was this type of science. So uh, <laughs> that was really amazing. I want to do the raffle if we can right now. Um, so uh, Booklandi is giving away two books, two copies of Latinitas. Um, so I am going to share my screen because I have a little fun app that I use uh, this website. It's called the Wheel of Names. <laughs> so <laughs> this is all the participants uh, that are here with us today. Oh, so, spin right now. Let's see who wins <laughs> the first book. Wow, the suspense. Ooh, Adriana Dominguez. <laughs> Felicidades. <laughs> so, Adriana, um, uh, let's uh, chat so I can get this sent to you. And now we have our next winner. And it's Patricia Moran. <laughs> Felicidades. You are also a winner of Latinitas. And please, um, we'll chat uh, after, after this so I can send it to you. Congratulations. Maceo, Adriana is wondering if we could actually give one of the copies to someone else because she has a copy. I don't know if she was the agent for the book. Can we, uh, can we <laughs> run, can we spin the wheel again? <laughs> spin the wheel again. Okay, let's do this again. Hold on. Um, Suspense, all right, everybody stay tuned. You might have a chance to win another copy. That's exciting. Okay, ready? And it's Lourdes. Mm -hmm. No, it's Maria de Leon. Oh, Lourdes. <laughs> that was very tough. But Maria de Leon, yay! <laughs> so, Maria, please, um, uh, we will chat after this. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Juliet, is there anything you wanted to share in closing before we say goodnight? Um, no, actually, I think I just wanted to thank, thank you both so much for doing this and for everyone who's come to be so supportive today and getting all the love for this book has been amazing. Um, it's just been such a, such a special day. It's beautiful. Congratulations. I can't wait to see where Latinitas goes around the world. Um, I sent, I posted a picture of my daughter reading it, but I'm sure that we're going to, be seeing lots of kids reading your book. So congratulations. I love that picture. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, um, I guess this ends our book launch of Latinitas. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, folks of Macmillan. Thank you, Juliet. This is amazing. It was a beautiful night and um, this will be recorded. Please purchase your copy of Latinitas at booklandia.co. I put it in the chat 
And um, thank you once again. Have thank a beautiful you. night. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Adios. Adios. Bye-bye.